School Podcast flying solo today talking about some things that you might see in church this Sunday. And one of the things that you might see in church this Sunday is uh, it's probably a lot of old people. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot of old people in church. There's, there's not a lot of kids. And um, everybody sort of freaks out about this thing. And uh, more often than not, uh, we try and solve the problem either without the kids in the room themselves or talking to the few kids that are there as it's there. They are somehow tasked with understanding and solving the problem for everybody else, even though a lot of the times it's the parents of those kids that aren't there who just didn't bring them. Um, I think instead of sort of assuming that uh, there's just something in church that kids don't want, um, maybe we can just sort of start with who is in church. Um, because if we just sort of start with, there's lots of old people in church, well, there's lots of reasons for, for kids not to go because like, I, I don't know, we, we um, I'm chasing 40 and I already say we, I don't know, um, they, <laughs> uh, the, the kids, you guys probably don't have some of the same hobbies. Um, you, you probably don't know what pinochle is or, or any of those sort of things. Um, talking about back in my day, uh, it, it feels good if you sort of put on a real big air of superiority like back in your day things were fine and now now everything is awful and uh nobody's here to clean up the pieces and well i i don't know that i'd want to be talked about that way either but but really um instead of talking about there's lots of old people in church let's start with the idea that there's jesus in church jesus is in church to forgive sins to save the dying to uh to to grant hope in a, a really hopeless place and that's sort of the thing that uh makes us want to go to church see if it's just sort of a social club for a generation that's far gone pack it in um but when we talk about what you see in church i think that the the temptation is to focus on the trappings instead of the thing that they're all pointing to um you have old people and that doesn't mean that they are worthless it means that they're facing down death and looking for life teenagers probably have a few years ahead of them before they have to do that i hope i pray but there's something here that in the last dying days, folks really seem to cling to. We live in a world where our kids have come to reckon with death. There are school shootings, there are suicides, there are all sorts of awful, terrifying, horrible things that Christ has conquered. He is bled, he has died, and he has risen, promising life even to the people who suffer, even to the people who do not make the good choices, even for the people who sin, even for the people who fall. He promises resurrection, hope, forgiveness, and peace. Uh, when you look around church and you find nothing but old people talking trash about everything else around them, you can kind of peel underneath it and see that um, in a lot of cases it kind of comes from insecurity and fear. Uh, it comes from a lack of self-confidence. It comes from worry. It comes from anxiety. They didn't necessarily have those terms for it, and it kind of festers inside the, the youngins. They, uh, you guys, you, you talk about these things in a much more open way, and that's awesome. But if all you talk about is the problem and never find the cure, all you really have is a better vocabulary to deal with what's wrong, but not really the ability to do so. Maybe the people in church, even if they don't necessarily act like it, just because they, they, they talk, um, uh, they complain a lot. They, they, they talk about back in my day. Uh, they, their anxieties are, are met by a Jesus who promises peace, hope, and comfort in the forgiveness of sins. And in the same way that you can go to church and still have anxieties, they can go to church and still have anxieties. It's, it's just that they sort of look a little bit different from the outside looking in, but that's sort of the, 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 the burden of anxiety is that uh, I can out, outwardly look like I've got things under control and inwardly just be a, a nervous wreck. Um, but our Lord promises to be our good shepherd. Uh, the thing that I go to church for over and over again is that Jesus is there. Um, Jesus is there so that I can lay everything that I have done wrong this week and I am convinced is going to ruin my whole life at the altar and say, Lord, uh, forgive me and eat and drink the body and blood for the strength to go on another week. And I am on either side of me. Um, surrounded by people whose burdens I don't necessarily know or share. But I get to rejoice that Jesus is there to feed them too. Uh, you're not going to solve the problem of why there aren't enough kids in church by talking about why there are too many old people in church. But, but rather, what is there worth receiving for, for somebody struggling with anxiety, for somebody scared of the world around them, uh, for somebody who is, uh, is confronted by the devil, by the world, and by their own sinful flesh? Well, here we actually have a lot to talk about. We have baptism. We have the preached gospel. We have absolution. We have the Lord's Supper. We have the word and the sacraments that do everything 
to to save us from these things everything to conquer these over and over again every single week and it's not measured it's not measured in uh being forgiven and then never ever falling back into sin it's it's measured in knowing that i should strive to never fall back into sin but if i do if i do there's always going to be forgiveness here if i if i come in here on, on my worst of weeks into the sanctuary i will be met with jesus not a culture that that has passed but but jesus for all of us even the people i don't understand and and um maybe maybe that's a, a place that uh, we, we can uh, teach other generations the same um, because of all the, the differences in opinions um, and, and, and all sort of the, the worry and, and talk about, you know, the, the good old days. The, the older folks are delighted to see you guys in church because not just they want to see this passed on to another generation, but because they're terrified of what you're up against just as much, if not more so, than you. And they know where hope is. Maybe they don't always express it the right way, but um, they need Jesus, and, and so do we. So as long as there's Jesus in church, that's that's where all of us need to be. And and if Jesus is not the first and foremost thing at your church, but it is pinochle or any other thing, I wouldn't want to go to your church either, so you want all you want. Um, one of the things that you will see when you go to church this Sunday, it might be a lot of old people gathered around uh, Jesus, but they are singing the hymns of timeless praise that uh, join us to the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting and countless generations that have gone before us. It joins us to Abraham, uh, to, to Moses, to Elijah, to Peter, to Paul, uh, to all of the saints throughout all of time and space, and uh, even, even the boomers. Um, I, I think uh, one of the things that we should probably look at instead of each other and say this is wrong, uh, because there's not enough of one generation or too many of the other. It's just, is there Jesus here? Because if there is, it, it's, it's, worth, it's worth pointing to, to somebody who's in the darkest of days, no matter how old they are. So uh, go to church, see Jesus, receive Jesus.